guys, it's Trina, and this is my worst books of 2016 list. When I say worst, I don't necessarily mean that these are objectively the worst quality, the worst written. I just mean that personally, these are my least favorite books that I read this year. I do hope that everyone knows that I'm not attacking anybody that loved these books. You are free to love them. There are six books on this list. I have reviewed all of these books, either in a separate individual full review or in my monthly wrap-ups throughout the year. So I'm going to skip summarizing what they are about and just let you guys know what it was I didn't like about them. At number six is The Love That's With The World by Emily Henry. This one was a debut novel this year. I was really looking forward to it and it just completely and utterly let me down. It was just a mess. The plot of this book was all over the place. I was really upset that it started setting things up that I thought were going to have like a big impact on the plot and then they were just dropped. This book could have been two separate stories and I really felt like the author didn't know which story she wanted to go towards. Did she want it to be a contemporary about losing first love or did she want it to be a time travel story? And there were so many info dumps in this book in order to explain what was going on that they just broke up the pace so much. On top of that, the main character is a Native American character, but I've heard and read articles that it was pretty bad representation. At number five on my list is Wink Poppy Midnight by April Genevieve to Hockey. To me, one word that would describe this book would be lacking. It was lacking character development. These characters felt like just cardboard cutouts. It was lacking plot. I found the plot uninteresting. I couldn't really find it, honestly. It was lacking any sense of intrigue because for a mystery or thriller, the cover of this book says that one of these characters is a liar and you go into it looking for it. It was also lacking in descriptions, in my opinion. Instead of actually describing a scene and what what was going on or how a character was feeling. We were just given one word that was repeated over and over and over and over and over and over and over. Is that annoying? That's annoying to me and that's how the entire book was. Number four on my list is The Me Before You by Jojo Moyes. This book was really hard for me to rank because I think it's extremely problematic, maybe to the extent that this could be number one on my list, like at the very bottom of the books that I read this year because of what a problematic portrayal of disability that I felt that it was. But there were a couple of things that I enjoyed about it. I did enjoy the characters and I was very very attached to them. Unfortunately the character with the disability, Will, who has quadriplegia, was just grossly mistreated. He is really only there to act as a prop. The only value that his character is assigned is bettering the life of the able-bodied character. And number three on my list is actually a set of two books that are in the same series. I read them back to back so it's hard for me to separate them in my head so they're just both gonna get this one slot. They are Rebel Angels and The Sweet Far Thing by Libba Bray. These are books two and three in the Gemma Doyle trilogy. There were many reasons why I did not like these two books, but the thing that I was the most mad about was that the character of Anne is constantly fat shamed all throughout the series. And I was just getting really frustrated with the way that this kept happening. Like, I wanted vengeance for Anne. That's why I kept reading the whole series, because I wanted her to burn everything down in the end, because I was so mad at how she was being treated. But what the real nail in the coffin was for me with these books is that at the very end of book three, we find out as a plot twist that a character has been gay the entire time. And a lot of people always get onto me for spoiling this, but guys, it's not a spoiler. If it is written as a spoiler, it is bad representation, and that is okay to be talked about. Someone's identity is not a spoiler. I totally understand that characters may not tell you right up front. They may not be out of the closet just like real people may not be and that this was a historical setting and that there are many reasons why these characters would not have been out of the closet at the time. I respect that they wouldn't have wanted to have been out but this could have been revealed to the reader or to other characters at some point along the way that didn't turn it into a plot twist added in just to add drama because I just don't think that you should add drama with somebody's identity, you know? Number two on my list is The Serpent King by Jeff Zintner. I actually DNF'd this book once I hit the halfway point, and the reason for that is because something had just been revealed to me that I felt had no build-up whatsoever, and it was a thing that you should have seen it coming. I didn't care about any of the characters, and once we got to the halfway point, I realized I don't care what the outcomes are, I don't know where this book is going, I don't want to know, and so I DNF'd it. I ended up letting a couple of my friends spoil me on what else happened at the last half of this book so I do know everything that happened and I was about seven pages away from the plot actually occurring at over halfway through the book. Like 
if I don't know what the story is about, how am I supposed to be invested in it? But to be completely honest with you guys, I didn't hate or dislike this book enough for it to even be on this list. The only reason that it is on this list is because I have had personal negative interactions with this author, and so I'm just being transparent with you guys. That is something that shapes my opinion of his books. I have seen him doing things that I feel are very disrespectful to reviewers that have made me fear for my privacy, and some things that I have seen him say made me really really lose respect for the way that he wrote the characters in this book. I don't really want to like get into the drama, so I'm not going to say the details of it. I'm just going to say personally, I have not liked the way that he has done some things, and so I just have no more interest in supporting his books or anything like that. So that's really honestly the reason why this book is on this list at all. And number one on my list, the worst book that I read this year was Dragonfly and Amber by Diana Gabaldon. This is the sequel to Outlander. I enjoyed Outlander when I read it. Dragonfly and Amber, though, called to my attention that rape is constantly used as a plot device, that this uh, relationship between the main two characters has a lot of really toxic elements to it. When a main character is saying that they live in fear of their spouse, that's not a healthy relationship. It just is not. There are many lines in this book that perpetuate rape culture, they romanticize rape, they victim blame when it does happen to the woman, and I just took issue with this. I've made an entire video about it and why it bothers me because of my personal history. I did give this book two stars because honestly, I do think there's quality in the writing here. I think that the author is very well researched, but the relationships and the overuse of rape and how rape was at times portrayed as a bad thing worth being killed over, and then at other times portrayed as a good thing that is very romanticized and desirable, that's what I could not like reconcile those two ideas in my head. I don't think that the book portrayed it well. It's not for me. Reading Dragonfly and Amber was like a constant minefield of things that were very harmful to me, but like I said, I gave it two stars because I did find that there was some quality here. Now the reason that this one still ended up at the very bottom of my list as the worst book I read this year is because of the fandom. I totally understand the feelings of fandom and just really being excited about something. That has never bothered me. I have never been upset with people for liking this book, but when I posted my review of it, which was posted six months ago, I still, like every week, I'm always getting comments on that video. I have endured so many personal insults about my character, my intelligence, my personal history, my relationships, and how I'm just so stupid and I don't even understand what history means. I have really enjoyed the discussions from people who have been open to actually having a discussion, but there have just been too many cases of fans just coming to hurl insults and assume that I'm an idiot because I didn't like the same book that they love, and I'm just over it. Honestly, that has lowered my opinion of the book even more. If you love this book, that's fine. If you love any of the books on this list, that's fine. So those were my least favorite books of 2016. Again, I have reviews of all of these somewhere on my channel, and I'll put links to those in the description if you want to hear more of my detailed thoughts on any of them. In the comments, I want you guys to tell me what your most disappointing book of 2016 was. If you're wanting a little relief from this negative opinion video, then my best books of the year video should already be up or it will be up soon. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the comments. Bye!